It's just started to rain and today I am building a six foot fence to go all the way along the back over kind of there-ish. Hiya folks, welcome back. I thought I would share with you today my approach to building a bog standard six foot board fence all the way along this back side of the garden over here. It's going to be six foot tall, about six foot tall and it's about eight meters long altogether. Now I'll be blatantly honest this isn't going to be the best fence in the world. I'm not spending thousands of pounds on this. It's tucked away in the far side of the garden out the road and I don't want to spend a huge amount of time and effort on it but at the same time I want something better than the kind of what we've got at the minute which is essentially nothing. The kind of fence I'm going to be building is this kind of thing. I don't know whether you would call that an open board fence or I don't think you would call it a closed board fence because it's not closed, it's got gaps in it. But um, I'm happy to have the gaps, it'll have plants and everything grown around it anyway and uh, yeah, it's a really bog standard British fence. A quick shout out as well, if you want to check out a few different videos about how to build fences, I will highly recommend Charlie D.I. White's video that he's done on creating, I think it was a closed board fence that he created. Uh, Ali Dimmock has done a great video on building a fence as well. And if you want the Rolls Royce of fences in your garden, there really is, um, April Wilkerson has set a very high bar with the fence that she has built, uh, I think it was around her property, and um, that, that's a beautiful red cedar, very, very nice fence, and she's done a really good video about how she made all of that, and it's a three-parter, definitely worth checking out if you want to go and push things further than what I'm gonna do, but I'm just, I'm not spending thousands of pounds on this, and it'll just tidy up this section of the garden, but yeah, I'll include links in the description below to those three videos. There's probably a load of other videos that are worth checking out as well, but uh, yeah, those three are definitely worth having a look at. What I would also say as well, I've done a lot of research on this and there is no set standard of how to create a fence. It seems to vary dramatically depending on where you are in the world. Over here, for example, red cedar and things are really expensive. I'm just using 75 by 75 posts. I know you can use thicker posts, but these are easy to work with. I've never ever seen a post break other than at the junction with the ground. So what I have done is painted the bottom of all the posts in bitumen paint. And then Mr. Mac Jr. has done an awesome job of staining all the posts as well. I've cut a 22 and a half degree angle on the top just to help any rainwater run off. And yeah, they're basically ready to go in the ground. Mini workshop set up outside. My trusty mitre station block is still packed so I'm having to use a brick. Does the same job. First things first though, I need to clear all of this kind of scrub and bushes and rubbish away so that I can actually get in to dig the fence post holes. So, let's crack on. Right, that is all cleared out now and I can actually see what I'm doing. That was an unbelievable amount of um, brambles and hawthorn and there wasn't really anything worth keeping at the end of the day. It was mostly just brambles and, and dead stuff and stuff that likes to lacerate you while you're uh, working. So it's all nice and clear now and see all the way along the boundary and I've even uncovered a concrete path that was hidden under the grass probably for the last 50 years or something. Always interesting when you find stuff like that. By the way, if I haven't already mentioned, please do hit subscribe and you can join me on this renovation project that we have got on a 1920s semi-detached property in the UK. Anyway, just to show you what I'm going to be doing next. So my only points of reference for where the boundary is was this old post here 
and that old post set. I've had no other point of reference to work off. So what I've ended up doing is I've run a string line and I've continued a perfect straight line all the way up, I'll climb through this tree, and that resulted in this kind of marker at the end here. And then I've done exactly the same at the other end. So again, using those two posts as a point of reference, I've put this marker bar here. And then what I've also done, just to be on the safe side, is then I've measured across from two points, one kind of up towards the top end, and I've measured all the way across from there to the other side of the garden. And I've done the same at the other end, so I've measured from here all the way across to the other side of the garden, to the boundary over there, just to double check that I am working to the correct boundary line. And everything tallies up, I'm happy, and the neighbors are happy where this is going. They are the ones that actually told me about these posts, which I didn't even know were there. And then I've marked out to dig some holes, and I'm digging them on 1790 centers. So basically 1800 centers, but I'm knocking off a centimeter to play on the safe side. I'd rather be too short rather than too long. I'm not 100% what size rails I'm getting yet because I haven't managed to get those, they were out of stock. And I'm not sure if they're gonna be 1800 or 2.4 meter. If they're 2.4, I can cut them down to pretty much any size. But if they're 1800, what I definitely don't want is for this gap between each post to be too big. So I'm erring on the side of caution. I'd rather go slightly under. So I've marked out the red dots where every post is going all the way along. Now, when we get to here, this that existing post happens to be exactly on 1800 or 1790. So that'll be an absolute nightmare trying to dig a post around there. We've got roots from this tree and then we're going to have roots from what was a hawthorn down the bottom there as well. It would just be an absolute digging nightmare. So I've come along a little bit just to make life easier. So this is gonna be a slightly shorter run to that post. And then just coming around the other side of that, I've measured 1790 from there, all the way along to this mark here. And I think realistically, that is as close to the end as I'm gonna get. We've got a giant birch tree here. I think it's a birch. And um, yeah, that is not gonna be easy to dig around that at the best of times. Even digging here is going to be a rooty nightmare, but I certainly can't go any closer to the marker that I've got. So that is going to be my end post. And I can always, you know, plant a bush here or something at the end just to kind of shelter off the rest of the boundary. But that is fine. I can't get any further than that. It's time to dig some holes.
So the holes are all dug and I've got the posts in and this is where probably things you might not have seen this method of, of putting posts in before but it seems to work pretty well and I quite like it. I am using a laser so um, if you don't have a laser then um, you can get away with just using like a spirit level or whatever but this will be much much easier using a laser and that's what I'm going to use. What I've done, I've re-established the boundary, so I've got metal post in that end. I've double checked the boundary all the way along now that all the holes are dug and I've re-established the boundary at that end as well. So I know the string down the bottom there is definitely in the correct place. And then it's just a question of going post by post, but little tip and again, you know, there's so many different ways of doing this. But what I've done, the way I'm doing it, is that I've got a piece of wood clamped at the bottom and I've got a single bracing piece going diagonally like that. But what I've done is I've raised the post very slightly off the ground. And the idea is to let the bottom of the post get encapsulated in concrete, because if it is gonna rot from the bottom, and to be honest, I've never seen a post rot from the bottom, but uh, if it is gonna rot, it's gonna rot at ground level. But the whole idea is if you encapsulate the post in the concrete, then water can't get up the bottom of the post. Obviously, since I'm doing this, it's not gonna rot at all. It's gonna be perfect. But essentially, these two clamps are taking the entire weight of the post at the minute. And the other nice thing about doing it this way is that it's quite easy to move the entire post backwards and forwards until it's literally just touching the string because what you don't want to do is kind of push the string away from your, your boundary marking. And just to show you what I'm doing with the laser, so I've got the laser switched on at the minute, and I don't know if you can see, but it's tracking a line across to there. It doesn't matter what height it's at, but there is the line from the laser. And all I've done is I've put a screw into the post at that height. I've measured down from the top of the post to the laser line, which happens to be exactly 27 centimeters. And then what I've done is I've gone around every post and I've put a screw at exactly 27 centimeters down because all of these posts are exactly the same height. So 27 centimeters. This post, I, I don't know if you can, I've blocked the laser line so you can't see it. So this post I haven't raised up yet. So I'm gonna raise it up by about an inch, you can see, but that is 27 centimeters from the top. Once I raise that one up, it'll be exactly on the laser line. Um, my laser isn't gonna reach over to those two, so I'll re-establish the laser and I'll then use this post as a reference to get the correct level for the remaining two posts. So that's basically it. It's a bit of a chew on, but once you've done this, it's uh, just a question of shoving the concrete in the hole and you, away you go. Just to show you as well, I've already leveled these two posts. So if you can see the, it's leveled that way as well. I've leveled the second post, so that one's all done and perfect. So I've got three more to do. What I haven't done is check the distance between the posts yet. I'll get them all leveled and to the correct height, and then I'll double check the distances and then we're ready to concrete them in. Right, get everything ready. Double check our distances. Well, oh, it's close, 1720. Gonna have to rejig things a bit. Right, so this one needs to come along a little bit, which is easy enough, but I'll have to re-level it, but crows are coming.
I had 175, 177, and then we should, we'll come back to the endy one. So, let's pour some postcrete. Now, obviously, I am going to end up getting concrete on my clamps, but they're easy to wash, so I'm not particularly bothered. Fill hole up to a third of the depth with clean water. Yeah, okay, whatever. Third of the depth. That looks about third ish. Double check our levels. Bob on. Bob on. Third of a bucket. Third of a hole. Next. Double check level on that one. Bob on. Bob on. So windy. We are good. Don't know if you can see anything over there. Um, I'll try and move you a bit closer to that one. If only there was a convenient water source. Can I reach the river? Been easier to go at the top. Check that for level. You can see we're directly on the laser line. Uh, we'll come around this side. Hopefully you can see. Bob on on that side. And Bob on that way. Look down the line of the fence. You can see we're absolutely spotterous on us. Yeah, magic. And then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the last post set off camera because it's getting dark and I need to kind of get finished. And then, we'll come back tomorrow and finish it all off, but it's the easy bit next, so that's the good news. I haven't actually bought the rails yet, so... Uh, Wix didn't have any in stock, and that's the closest place for me to get them. So I'm going to have to try, try being cute. Uh, but that's fine. The main thing's getting the the posts in. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and catch up tomorrow.
Good morning folks and welcome back and what a beautiful morning it is. The jacket is off for probably the first time this year. Anyway, I will show you what I have done so far. You have probably seen me messing about with a little bit of concrete and all I have done is put a bit of concrete in the bottom of each hole just with it sloping gently. You can't really see on that one. So you can kind of see better on this one over here. So all I've done is I've piled up a bit of concrete around the bottom of each one just to slope the concrete away from the base of the post. So any water isn't going to be accumulating in kind of around the base. It's going to kind of run away. I mean, all of this will be covered by soil, so you don't have to be particularly precious about it, but it just means that we're not getting like pools of water sitting at the bottom. Trying to shape the postcrete because the postcrete sets so quickly, it's really difficult to shape the postcrete, but I find it's just as easy to come along, pop a blob of concrete on the next day. And that just, it just means that any water is going to easily kind of run off. So I've done that on every post. As I say, you don't have to be particularly precious about it. And this is just my kind of method of doing things, but uh, I think it's a good idea. And then we're on to setting the rails. So getting your first three is probably the most important bit. The spacing that you use is entirely up to you. Just obviously make sure that the pickets are high enough to kind of reach the top of your rails and go beyond the top of the posts. I think what I've done is I dropped down about 100, I went for the midpoint for the middle rail and I came up at the bottom about 200 just so the bottom one isn't too close to the ground. Normally I prefer to go a little bit thinner on the rails, kind of 30 mil thick. These are a little bit thicker but um, it's all that they had in stock but they're treated C24 stud work as far as I can tell but it'll do the job. They're a decent size. I've got plenty of meat in that direction for attaching the pickets onto and um, yeah it just means you want to use nice big screws to get all the way through. If needs be you can always counterbore them slightly but uh, it's very soft wood so once you screw into this the screws will happily counterbore themselves. I am using 10 gauge by three and a half inch quicksilver screws. If you haven't already watched my video about how quickly wood screws rust then I'll leave a link in the description below. If you want to go belt and braces then use like treated deck screws and stuff but honestly I've, I've had bad experiences with those and I know where I am with these and honestly uh, these will last a lifetime they're incredibly hard screws and uh, yeah so you can kind of see how far they go into the post they go a good halfway into the post if not further once they're counterboard a little bit. Another little thing, I couldn't get the post any further that way, but what I can do is just overrun the rail slightly and I can get some boards attached along here just to get the fence as far in that direction behind this laurel as I possibly can. And then once we get along to this side, all we do, midpoint, two screws and work your way along. Now, if you do really want to go belt and braces and you're happy to use like Quicksilver type screws, one thing you can do is just back the screw out of the hole shove some grease on the end of the screw, screw it back in, shove a bit of grease over the screw head and honestly that ain't gonna rust, that'll be absolutely fine. But I don't think that's necessary personally, but if you want to go belt and braces do that. I mean you could go stainless steel screws if you want to go really over the top, but stainless steel has its own pros and cons. So up to you in the end, I'm happy with just bog standard quicksilver screws they will do the job absolutely fine. The only other thing to mention about doing the rails really is once you've got your first rail in then life becomes infinitely easier because then you can use that rail as a clamping point for a little bit of wood and then you can rest your next rail onto that and just work your way along. So once your first rails are in life becomes way way easier. Anyway, there's only so much I can talk about fence rails. I'm going to get these in and I'll then start getting the first few pickets in and then I'll come back to you.
Right, making quite good progress with the pickets. I'm up to the next kind of levelling mark, so I'm going to have a little break. I haven't got that much left to do, but uh, I'm going to have some lunch. I'll quickly show you a couple of things with regards to this. It was easier at this kind of endy bit because I was stuck in a bush, so I kind of did all of those manually, like levelling every picket as I went along. But then as I've got a little bit more into the clearing, then I've been able to run a string all the way along. It just makes life much easier. You can, of course, use a laser if you want to, but honestly, a string is just as easy to work to. And frankly, I can't be bothered walking 50 meters up the garden to get my laser all set up and the tripod and all that. So uh, yeah, string does the job for that. All I've done is I've got the string on top of that picket over there and I've established a level all the way over to a temporary picket held on with clamps over there and I've got the string on the top of that and then I'm just working along to it using a spacer which is the thickness of the fence. I am using trusty turbo gold four and a half by 45 screws. Four and a half by 45s just seem to be just the right size for so many different jobs. I use them all the time. I've put all six screws in all of the end pickets, but then where are we from? Here onwards, I've only got um, one at the top and one at the bottom, and I'll come back and basically fill in the rest once I've got all the pickets kind of in the correct place. You don't have to be particularly anal with screw placement. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a fence hidden at the bottom of the garden. So I'm just eyeballing. But what you don't want to do is have all the screws in a row because that can potentially cause the rail to split so you do want to offset them so I'm going low high low high low high low high but obviously you'll get to the odd one where like for example where there's a knot take my spacer out but for example here you don't want to be screwing through a knot avoid knots at all costs so I've had to go slightly off but no one's gonna care as I say I wouldn't be too precious with your screw placement. Try and get them like roughly in line by eye. But I think if you try and like precisely line up your screws, you tend to kind of dig a hole for yourself where if you have one screw that's out of place, it looks really obvious. Whereas if you just eyeball them, it makes it much less obvious if you've had to move one screw out the road to, to miss a knot. As I say, at the end of the day, it's a fence at the bottom of the garden. No one cares where the screw holes are. Again, if you want to be massively anal about it, you can pre-drill clearance holes in the wood before putting the screws in. But honestly, with the turbo golds, they drive the way through the wood so well because they've got the self-drilling tip. You really don't need to worry about it. And once again, you know, you can use deck screws or screws that are specifically designed for fencing if you want, but I know where I am with these and I've tested them and I've used them loads and they will be absolutely fine. You can use the grease trick as well if you want, but uh, honestly, they'll be fine. So nearly done. I'm going to grab a spot of lunch, get these finished off and then I'll show you the finished article.
And that's it all done, and I think it looks all right. It does the job. For a quick fence at the bottom of the garden, I think it's absolutely fine. If you wanted to make it slightly more robust, I would perhaps go for slightly thicker pickets. But in a sheltered spot like this, it ain't going anywhere. I did actually buy some capping pieces to go on top of the fence, but they didn't really fit very well, and they're going to need a little bit of modification so that they do fit, and it's probably outside the realms of a simple fencing video. I might chat about it more on a future video, so don't forget to hit subscribe, I'll leave it at that for now and you can watch me nearly falling in the river. Easier to go at the top. 